So good morning, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to the October 2nd, 2021 HLAA Diablo Valley chapter meeting. And our topic is to, today is going to be Eno Caption. But before we get going on that, um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ann Thomas, and I'm the president of the Diablo Valley chapter, in case you don't already know who I am. And I'd like to introduce the other board members. We have Zohair Chiba. Zohair, can you say hello so people can see what your face looks like? Zohair had some problems yesterday. He communicated with um, his audio. So I don't know whether that just happened because I didn't hear him. So next is Jill McFadden and she's our secretary. Jill, can you say hi? Good morning. And Walt Bateman is our treasurer. Walt, can you say hi? Hello. Thank you. So we know that by now, almost everybody is familiar with Zoom and how to kind of navigate. But in case we have some new people today, we don't want anybody to be stuck and not know how to access some of the most important things. So we start out our meetings giving directions. And these directions only apply to the desktop version of Zoom. The first thing, and obviously for all of us, the most important thing is closed captions. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a menu bar that looks exactly like the image here. And it, when you see the CC button, you may already, they may have automatically started, they may not have started. If they didn't start, click on the CC button and click on subtitles, and then they'll, they'll automatically start. You also can increase the size of those. I happen to like mine as large as possible, makes it much easier to read. And if you're like me, lots of times the captions go by too fast and I can't figure out, by the time I realized that there was something that I didn't understand, it's already passed. So if you enable full transcript, a whole long list, the whole conversation will show up there. And you can very easily just scroll back to miss that, to find that word or two that you missed and then proceed forward. You can also move the um, caption window anywhere you would like on your screen to make it the most convenient for you to be able to augment your understanding by lip reading. Since there are probably going to be 30 of us in our meeting today, we definitely can't figure out who is um, raising their hand and in what order. So we'd like to ask that people use the raise hand feature, which is located in the reactions at the bottom of your screen. It's the smiley face with the plus. And so when you click on that, a new window will open up, which is the window below the long bar. And see, it says raise hand there. When you click on raise hand, what happens is in your thumbnail in the upper left-hand corner, a hand will show up. And also in the participants list, there's a hand that shows up next to your name. And the hands in the participants list are in the order that people raise their hands. So you don't have to worry about um, not being called on in the order that you raised your hand. Another feature that's very important to all of us is the ability to be able to regulate the size of the person speaking and the presentation that's happening. And so you can adjust that screen size if you're in speaker view and how you find the image of the box that says speaker gallery and immersive, it's in your upper right hand corner and it says view. When you click on that, if you click speaker, what happens is the speaker will be on the right and the presentation is on the left. And the lines in the middle that are circled, you can drag those windows back and forth. So if you, your personal preference would be, you would like to have the person who's speaking be bigger so that it's easier for you to lip read, you can do that. Well, I'd like to remind everybody to speak a little slower. I don't know if you're like me, but when I get nervous or excited, 
I speak faster. And that makes it harder for our captioner to accurately caption. It makes it harder for all of us to understand. So it's a reminder to me. It's a reminder to all of you. It's a reminder to our presenters. And if by some chance someone feels that somebody is speaking too fast, please put a message in the chat and we'll ask the person, remind the person to slow down. Whoops. We also would like to remind people that external microphones are very, very important with the Zoom. They increase the audio clarity for everybody. So I use an external microphone, it's a blue microphone, and you can tell just by how close or how far away I'm moving that microphone, you probably can hear this huge difference in the audio. So if you happen to have an external microphone, the next time you Zoom, make sure to connect it. So it's my great pleasure to um, have Matt and Christina here from Eno Caption. I have known them since they first attended an HLA convention years ago when they were the first company to be approved by the FCC for doing, and I'm, Matt, I think it's something having to do with um, ASR captions, right? And you can tell us all about that. And nobody else had done that before and they applied and they were approved. And then that started the whole, um, captioning that was available for all of us on um, our cell phones. And now they've expanded and they have a desktop version, which I'm sure that they'll tell you all about today. So Matt and Christina, I'm turning the meeting over to you. All right, thank you so much. And it is great to see you as always. I honestly wish that every webinar that we did, it would start off with helpful tips for people watching it through Zoom. So you guys are very lucky to have someone like Anne. Um, today, like Anne said, we're gonna be going over an caption. We're very excited. We're gonna be sharing a brand new PowerPoint because we're gonna be talking about the latest feature that just came out about a week ago. It's Desk View. Desk view basically allows you know, caption users to make outgoing calls directly from their computer so they no longer need to rely solely on their cell phones. But like I said, we will cover that throughout the presentation. Now, one of the things that Anne mentioned, I'm pretty sure she mentioned it because she knows me really well. I tend to get excited and I tend to speak very fast. So if anybody needs me to slow down, uh, I'm gonna be sharing my screen but Christina, she's going to be helping me out. She's going to be on the lookout. If anybody needs me to slow down, please let me know. Uh, with that being said, I'm about to share our PowerPoint. We don't like just sitting here and talking at you guys for 30, 45 minutes. So if anybody has any questions about anything that we're covering, please let us know. We'll pause every now and then. We'll stop and ask if anybody has any questions. Like I said, just let us know. We also have a brand new video that we're going to be sharing in the beginning. It's our corporate video, and that's about three minutes long. It's just a little message from our co-CEO, Joe Duarte. So let me pull up my screen. All right. Can everybody see the presentation? I'll yeah, take that Matt, as a yes. Can you, can you um, get rid of the sidebar? So start from the slideshow from the beginning. Hold on, Ann. Let me do it uh, again. Just go F5 if it's a PC. Just said F5, F5 key. If you're using a PC. That, yeah, did that do it? No. If you hit F5, it'll put it into presentation mode. Yeah, I'm hitting it. Or slide screen mode. Hmm. Matt, on the top, if you go to the slideshow tab, and I feel like we should tell everybody this is a weird malfunction because we do these presentations all the time and Matt always controls the slide deck. He is definitely the more tech savvy one of the two of us. 
then Maurice you might have it. Yeah, you can go from there. Go slideshow. Yeah. You can click there and then all the way to the left. Right there. What about now? No, Matt, you know what I think happened? I think you're share. Are you only sharing PowerPoint as opposed to sharing your whole screen? No, I'm sharing my screen. This is very interesting. This is the first time that this has happened to us. Well, well listen, there have been all these Zoom issues recently. We had a problem in our last meeting. They were all related to PCs. So we all we can do is we just go with the flow, right? Absolutely. Well, while Matt figures that out, I'm happy to start talking a little bit about who we are and a little bit about what Anne was talking about. We are, as Anne said, in all caption, and that was such a lovely introduction, Anne. Thank you. As I want to echo Matt's sentiment that it, it's so nice to go through all of the Zoom rules before starting. It would be great if every presentation was like that. Inel Caption was the first ever provider to be certified that was app only. So unlike the majority of the companies on the market, we only have an application. So we work on Apple and Android devices. There's no landline phone. We recently were approved to provide automatic speech recognition captioning. And we were the first incumbent provider to do that. Everybody else on the market has, has put in applications. Some of them has been approved. But why what we do is different is we have stenographers and ASR. We allow our users the control over their caption methodologies. We believe that our users know their accessibility needs best because you do. So we want to make sure in the middle of a call, as your accessibility needs may change, you're in full control of the captions and you are able to switch back and forth. Um, we are the only ones that also allow unlimited switching between the two technologies. I've worked for Anal Caption for about six years and I am very passionate about it. I am the child of two individuals who are, were born with profound hearing loss. Very late in life when I was in college, they, well, that's, it wasn't late in my life, I was in college, but they got two bilateral cochlear implants. Um, they were actually the first couple in Virginia to get implanted in adjoining hospital rooms. So that was kind of cute. There was a newspaper per article about them, but that is how I got involved in this industry and in this technology because of my parents and seeing that they didn't have telecommunications access on their cell phones for so long. So can you guys see my screen or still nothing? Um, we can see the PowerPoint presentation, but only in PowerPoint. It's not actually presenting as a presentation. And what about now? No. Now, are you no. seeing the presentation? Yeah, I am. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so I think we're just going to have to... But you can still see what's on the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll improvise it. Just like Anne said, we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently this time. Uh, I will share the, the PowerPoint presentation with you afterwards, Anne, if you wanna share that with anybody else, please feel free to. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Uh, today's presenters, uh, you have me and Christina. I am the director of marketing for InnoCaption. I've been with InnoCaption since we first launched in 2016. Christina, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about yourself? Oh, while you were figuring that out, I told them everything they need to know about me and more. I guess I didn't mention that I do regulatory affairs for the company. So my job is um, working as a liaison with the FCC and making sure that we are abiding by everything legal. I do a lot of compliance, but as a small company, everybody wears lots of hats. Yes. So let me, I don't think we're going to be able to show the video since I'm not sharing my screen, yes, but the video I will share with you guys afterwards, it was a message from our co-CEO, Joe Duarte, the person that you see on your screen right now. 
And the main gist of the message is what you're seeing on your screen right now. Basically, at InnoCaption, our mission is to offer the best telecommunications accessibility solution to the deaf and hard of hearing community. And the key thing for us is that at the end of the day, we, we like to say this over and over again, our users drive our innovation. And what we mean by that is that of all the updates that we've done to the app since we first launched in 2016, a majority of them were because we received an email from a user asking us to look into, you know, can you add this to the app or can you do this differently? And I'm bringing this up because if you do try an caption for the first time and you see that there's something missing, send us an email, let us know that there's something that we could be looking at it differently. We love to get feedback from our users. The presentation today, we're going to be talking about InnoCaption. In the beginning, InnoCaption was only used on the cell phone, but as you can see on your screen now, we're also available on laptops and desktop computers as well. What is InnoCaption? InnoCaption is a mobile app that provides real-time captioning of phone calls for individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing. Now, if you're familiar with landline captioning phones, it, the idea is similar, but we deliver the captioning completely differently. The key difference between an caption and everybody else is that we're the only ones providing that captioning through stenographers. So we have real people typing what's being said. Because of that, our accuracy is higher and our speed of delivery is also higher. Now, one of the latest updates that we've done to the InnoCaption app is to allow users to also make and receive calls through automated speech recognition or ASR. And we'll talk more about that in a few slides. Well, who is InnoCaption for? And as you can see, anyone in the United States who needs captioning to understand their phone calls due to a hearing loss is eligible to use our services. So if you're in the United States and you have a hearing loss, you can download InnoCaption at no cost because our service is offered free of charge. We are certified by the FCC and funded by the TRS fund. Well, the question that I like to receive the most is the one that you see on your screen. How do I get started with InnoCaption? And it's very, very simple. From the minute you decide to download to the second you make your first call, it should be between five and 10 minutes. It's very easy. Number one, if you have an iPhone, you go on the App Store. If you have an Android, you go on the Play Store. You search for InnoCaption. That's our logo right there. You download the app. You register. You can register directly on your phone or you can go on our website and register there. After the registration is done, you open up the InnoCaption app. It's gonna ask to enter your cell phone number and the password that you created during the registration process. You hit next, the app is activated and you're ready to make your first call or receive your first call. Uh, before we get into how our captioning work, does anybody have any questions? Do you need me to go over anything that we just covered? If not, Christina, I'm going to throw it to you and you can talk a little bit about this choice that we give to the users. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Matt. So how does our captioning work? As Matt said, we were the first provider and we are still the only provider to provide phone captions using stenographers or cart providers. So just in case there's anybody on the call that doesn't know what a stenographer is, it is an individual like in a courtroom where you have the people typing the transcript, but they use shorthand. It's a smaller keyboard and they, they type phonetically. So it's a lot faster. These individuals have gone through a lot of school and a lot of training to be able to provide fast and accurate transcripts. As um, somebody who grew up in the hard of hearing community, in the beginning, when people started asking for automatic speech recognition, I didn't understand why, because I think there has been a, a stigma against it for a long time. And I asked a lot of our users who were asking for it, why ASR met their accessibility needs. I heard things from people who were not comfortable having a third party on the line, even though it's confidential and fully private, they expressed that they felt functional equivalence would never be met until they, like their hearing peers, were able to have a phone call without somebody on the line. 
I had people tell me they felt CART stenographers were a limited resource. So when they're on hold with social security for an hour, they want the ability to switch off to something else and only go back to that live individual when a live person comes on the line. I had somebody explain that because of the speed of ASR, they had enough residual hearing that if ASR made mistakes, it still met their accessibility needs. So I understood more fully how different everybody's accessibility needs are. We started testing with automatic speech recognition before we released it. And our co-CEO, Joe, who's a bilateral CI user, started taking all of his calls with it before we even beta tested the technology. And this switching feature was born because he was on a call with an airline and in the beginning, the call went really well. It was an interactive system. Computers understand computers, very fast, great. He was on hold for about 20 minutes. It was a significant hold. And he was transferred to a representative whose voice didn't process well with automatic speech recognition. At that time, that's what he was testing. That's what he had. So he was in the position of having to ask for help from somebody in the office or hang up and start the call again using a cart provider. And neither of those is an accessible phone call. So he emailed the team and said, the only way that this will work is if we give our users the ability to switch as they need between cart and ASR. At the time, it was not technologically feasible, but our engineers are amazing and they worked very hard. And now we are the only company that has that switch. Some of the differences between the two, obviously CART providers bring a human element. So they can provide for individuals who don't have a lot of residual hearing and nonverbal cues are important, like dogs barking or bad connections, stuff going on in the background. They are able to provide those parentheticals to let you know what's going on on the call. They can also prompt you, oh, speaker far away echoing. Automatic speech recognition doesn't do any of that, but it is very fast. So where people have very clear voices, my voice processes very well because I enunciate my words. I don't have, um, I mean, some people say I have an accent, but that's neither here nor there. Matt's voice processes even better because he's a man. Men's voices tend to process better. You want to avoid using ASR with little kids. Tiny human beings don't have regular speaking patterns and they really confuse ASR. The captions are terrible. Um, certain accents, different voice patterns. I was on a webinar testing automatic speech recognition and the speaker had a very clear voice. I was so sure her captions were gonna be great and they were terrible. I was trying to figure out why I listened closer and I realized she was nervous. Her voice was shaking. So the automatic speech recognition, her voice had an abnormal pattern and it wasn't processing well. So there are pros and cons to each one, um, but stenographers as human beings are able to pro caption different accents, children, um, speech patterns that are outside of ASR's capabilities. So that's just a little bit of background. I could talk about this forever. If when you are on the Inno Caption app, you are able to choose before a call what you want to start with. As you can see in the screenshot, and I know it's really small, so I'm going to tell you what it says. On the upper right hand corner, that is where you select your caption mode before you make a call. And it'll give you a choice between automatic speech recognition in English, automatic speech recognition in Spanish, or CART. Um, and then during a call, you are able to, at the bottom of the screen, to the right of the disconnect button, switch as you need. Um, so when you hit that, in the middle of a call, the box will pop up. And if you're using ASR, you can switch to cart. The other party doesn't know that you're switching. There's no lag in captions. 
in the background, we have both sets running at the same time and then it overlaps. So for you, you're not gonna lose any captioning. I also actually recommend this to people. If you have a bad connection, like you're having a bad Wi-Fi connection or your captions freeze for some reason, a little trick is to switch caption modes because it refreshes everything in the connection. So you, the captions will pick back up. Now, privacy. Let me take a sip of my water really quick. Before I move on um, to privacy, does anybody have any questions about CART, automatic speech recognition, or, or anything that I, I was just talking about? I don't see any hands, um, but I know I can only see some of the participants. So if I ask if people have questions and you're raising your hand, but I don't see you and I try to move on, please just turn on your microphone and interrupt me. Um, I don't want anybody to think that I'm ignoring questions. So what about privacy? Christina, we have one raised hand from oh, Julie. Perfect, thank you, Matt. Julie, go ahead. What is CART, C-A-R-T? That is a great question. So CART actually stands for, um, I'm actually pulling up what it stands for, but it is a stenographer. Um, it stands for Communication Access Real-Time Translation. And it is a stenographer, uh, it, they are a stenographer. It's a live person who types in shorthand. So as opposed to having a full keyboard where they have to type out every letter, their system has a dictionary that they program ahead of time. And by hitting fewer keys, they're able to spit out full words. Thank you. Of course. Do we have any other questions? We, I see two more uh, hands going up, Christina. So yeah, keep going. Okay. Cool. So Matt, I cannot see the names on the hands. Do you want to call out the next person? Yeah, I think Zoh Zohar has a question. We don't have audio for you. Are you muted? I wonder if we can ask to unmute. I don't think my Zoom is allowing me to do that. Do you wanna type your question in the chat and we can, we can answer it? And while you type that, Matt, why don't we take the, um, oh, wow. My so Christina and Matt, uh, Zohar had problems yesterday with his audio and he had them at the beginning of our meeting too. So. Um, Zohar, if you just type your question into the chat, um, we'll make sure it gets answered. And while he does that, and we're talking about Zoom problems, I will be right back. Ever since Zoom did an update, my, my computer froze. I have two screens on top of each other. I cannot see anybody. So I will be back in one minute while he types his question. So Christina and Matt, we know that Zoom started having problems for people with PCs. Yeah. Um, maybe 10 days ago. Okay. And they it's... are continuing to release um, updates for that. I believe the most current one is eight. Alan Katsura, is that accurate? Seven, five, eight, seven. I think it's five, eight. And so what happens, they keep releasing the update to fix something, but it doesn't fix everything. But you yeah. have to go in and manually update. It won't automatically update. Okay, okay. We'll definitely look into that. And both Christina and myself, we have PCs. So I'm sure that's what's affecting the presentation. Like Christina mentioned, we've been doing these for a while. And today is the first day that we're not able to share the, the, the full presentation. But we're still making it work. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. So Matt, I think that Christina left and that's what happened to other people. They had to leave 
the meetings to um, unfreeze their screen. Okay. I'll tell you guys what, let's keep going. Uh, once Christina comes back, she'll finish uh, the slide about privacy. It is important. So we will come back to this in a little bit. But while she's reconnecting with us, let me go ahead and talk to you guys about some of the key features that we have for the InnoCaption app. And right off the bat, the three main ones are in front of you guys. So first of, when you download InnoCaption, you're going to be given a separate number, but you don't have to rely on that number. You can keep using your original cell phone number. The second one is the fact that now you can also make directly outgoing calls from your desktop computer. And the third one is the fact that we're the only company that gives the users choices when it comes to how they want to receive the captioning, either through a real person, a stenographer, or ASR. And I think Christina is back with us. Is that... Christina, are you there? Oh, wait a minute. I just screwed something up for her. Hang on. I am. <laughs> she I is. am. All right. How is everything looking on your end? Good. I apologize for that, guys. I have had a great time with Zoom lately. I heard and talking about the problems with um, PC. So... Well, yeah. the, good, the good thing is that we're very familiar with uh, customer support. So we'll reach out to their customer support and see how we can make sure that this doesn't happen again. But in the meantime, Christina, why don't you go ahead and finish the slide about privacy? Absolutely. So as I mentioned in the beginning, we are a certified IPCTS provider. IPCTS stands for Internet Protocol Caption Telephone Services. And as part of that, we have to abide by federal regulations. One of that, those is confidentiality. We take our user privacy very seriously. And we obviously, it, it is part of our compliance as well. Our stenographers are highly trained professionals. They, they undergo background checks before they're e ever able to get on our system. And they are individuals who have put a lot of money into their training they're used to working in confidential settings. We have contractors who work with us that also work for DLJ, uh, DLJ, GOJ, excuse me, um, in academia, in court. So confidentiality is not a foreign concept to these individuals. Additionally, they can actually only hear the half of the call that they're captioning. So when you make a call as the you know, caption user, they don't hear what you say they hear the other person. I don't know if you have ever tried to figure out context from half of a conversation. It's actually incredibly difficult. Um, and while we are talking about that, I feel like I should say I've had people tell me that they always thank their captioners at the end of every call. They ask the other person to hang on and, and thank the captioner for um, the captions they provided. And it always breaks my heart when I have to say, oh no, they don't, they can't hear you. You need to tell the other person to repeat what you're saying. Um, but it really is best practice and, and the best way to keep things confidential. Your call transcript, you are able to save them to your device. And now we have settings where our users are able to choose always save the transcript, ask before saving transcripts, or never save the transcript. And once you delete those transcripts, we are not able to recover them. The system just isn't designed to be able to do that. Um, and we've had people reach out and, and say that they would like us to look at their transcripts or they would like us to recover them for them. And, and we just don't have that ability. So it's important if you have important transcripts to save them yourself and back them up because it is out of our control. As for automatic speech recognition, I know that this was a very hot topic for a long time, and I guess still is outside the scope of IPCTS. Our ASR engine doesn't do any machine learning while on the calls. So what that means is none of your audio is logged. The way that automatic speech recognition engines get better is they take little pieces of what they hear so they can learn. But we contract with Google and we pay more, so none of that happens on our calls. Um, so you get the benefit of all the learning that happens out there off of phone calls for the speech recognition engine to get better, 
but it does not happen on our calls. Awesome. Thank you, Christina. I, I'm glad you're back. This slide is way too serious for me. So thank you for, <laughs> for joining us again. Uh, all right. So let's go back to the key features that, that we were talking about. And, and the first one you see there is your personal Inno caption phone number. Like I mentioned, as soon as you download the app, you're going to be given your Inno caption number. That number is going to match the area code of your cell phone number, but the ending is going to be different. Now, in the beginning, when we first launched, users had to rely on that number. So when they make calls, that's the number that the person would see on their caller ID. And if they wanted uh, to receive captions on incoming calls, then that's the number that the person needed to call. Now, today, you don't need to do that anymore. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Well, besides that, you can also view the transcript of the conversation, like Christina was saying. Now, you're only going to have access to half of that conversation, just what the other party is saying. You can email that to yourself. You can save it on your phone indefinitely. Uh, caption voicemail. If you were an Inno Caption user from our early days, you probably remember having to sit through every single voicemail message to get to a particular message. Well, we just gave our voicemail a total revamp and now you, we have visual voicemail. So you can select which voicemail you wanna to listen to. Again, thanks to user feedback, we were able to implement this change recently. The last one you see on your screen is caller ID settings. And what that does it allows you know, caption users to select which number the person they're calling will see on their caller ID. So they can choose between their you know, caption number, their cell phone number, or they can block their number from showing on the person's caller ID as well. Uh, besides hey, Matt, that, yes. Can I jump in really quick? And that, caller I, that caller ID feature is a great example of something that was developed that we would have never thought of from user feedback. Back in the day, you were only able to choose between your in-home caption number and your native number. Your native number is your cell phone number. We had a number of users on our system who are doctors who are hard of hearing, and they let us know if they had the ability to block their number, they would be more on level with their hearing peers for telecommunications access because Hearing doctors were able to block their cell phone numbers so they could work from home and call patients without sharing their personal contact information. So we were able to implement that one very quickly. And it's, I just love sharing that story because I, I hope it illustrates that if you take the time to contact us and it's something we're able to do, we absolutely want to do it for you. So yeah, Matt, I'll give it back to you now. Great story. Yeah, th thanks for jumping in. Um, well, besides the ones that we just covered, we also have multi-language support. As you saw earlier, we do uh, Spanish uh, through ASR, and we're currently looking into adding several other languages as well. Uh, we have a spam call filter. We know everybody today, whether you have a hearing loss or not, is dealing with an increased number of spam calls. So we, we do allow our users to block those calls. Besides the uh, filter that we have enabled on the app, we also give users the choice to block numbers individually. So if you're getting calls constantly from a certain number, you can go and add them to your block list. We have desk view caption mirroring, and I'm going to talk about that in a few slides. I'm very excited to share that with you guys. And the last one is the in-call caption mode switch. That's the one that Christina was talking about earlier. The choice that we give users to switch between ASR and CART, uh, either before or in the middle of a call as well. And That's here you can, you can see before, another update. Matt, yeah, go ahead. Really quick, um, before we move on, from the spam call filter. And this is not normally something I say during presentations. So this is, you guys are the first group to hear this. If, if you receive a call that's marked as spam likely and you realize it's a, your doctor's office or a legitimate number, let us know. Cause we will contact the, the provider to let them know that that number should be removed. Additionally, I was reading a, an article about spam calls the other day and if you guys ever get a call that is not 
flagged as spam. And, but the individual is claiming to be from the government or uh, the more recent thing that's been coming out is police officers saying that you have to pay bail for something. And if you hang up with them, you'll have a bench warrant. Always know a good way to tell is if you say that you will call them back um, on a number that is, is public or I'll give you a call back and they won't let you. And they say, if you hang up, you know, this is it, you'll get arrested or whatever. It's a pretty good indication that it is a spam call. The FCC has been battling this for a couple of years now, but hopefully we're getting rid of a lot of them soon. Sorry, Matt, you can go ahead. Okay, we only have one more uh, when we're talking, one slide to go uh, to talk about the latest updates. And this is again, yet another one that we did uh, after we heard from one of our users. Uh, we now give users the choice to select between dark mode or light mode. And for the captioning themselves, you can customize the color of the background. You can change the type of font and you can change the font color as well. So again, we just want to give users as much, as many choices as we possibly can. And with all of this being said, the one feature that we're very, very excited to talk about today is Desk View, uh, something that we just released uh, about a week or a week, of, a little over a week ago. And I'm gonna throw it to Christina. Christina has been working heavily testing uh, Desk View and she knows this inside out. So Tina, talk to them about it. Absolutely. So for Desk View, and if you're wondering why there's a little um, blank screen on the right-hand corner, it is a video, but the screen is very small. Uh, so we won't show it today but it's a video where I walk through all the desk view features. Matt will share it afterwards with Anne. So everybody who attended can, can get a copy of the video. It is captioned and it walks through all of these features very slowly. As many of you probably know, we have had desk view for a while, but what this latest desk view update does is it enables you to make outbound calls from your computer. We received a lot of feedback from the community that it was great to be able to mirror the captions from your cell phone to the screen. But while people are working, it would be so much easier or for Zoom calls if they could just dial directly from the computer. Matt, do you mind going back to the previous slide so we can see what it looks like? So now when you log into desk view on the right-hand side here, you see that there is a dial pad and you are able to call out right above that dial pad, just like on the InnoCaption app, you are able to choose whether you want automatic speech recognition or a cart provider. And you can't really see it here, but below there is a option for input device and output device. You can select where you want to hear the audio. Um, just a little tip, always make sure those two things match the input and the output or you'll get an echo. This is great for Zoom calls. This is great for conference calls. Um, Matt, do we still have the Zoom slide? Because Zohan had ha asked a question about Zoom or did that get taken out with, oh, perfect. We do have the Zoom slide. Um, so while we're talking about desk view, I am going to jump and talk about inner caption for Zoom meetings, because that was the question that Zohan had asked in the chat. The short answer is yes, you can use inner caption for Zoom meetings. But something to be aware of is if your group or employer or whoever is in charge of the meeting will provide cart captioning you want to go and get a contracted cart provider as opposed to using on-demand cart. There's a couple reasons for that. On-demand cart is wonderful. They are highly talented individuals, but they are not in the presentation. They won't be able to identify speakers. They won't know who's speaking. They, you will likely have different cart providers because that's the way it works on demand. They can hand the call off and they have no contacts. A CART provider that you contract with ahead of time receives the preparation materials. So any technical language 
they already have programmed in their dictionary. They're able to communicate directly with you if there are technical issues. So overall, it provides a higher level of accessibility than on-demand cart. With that being said, InnoCaption is there for you. If you can't have a cart provider or we have individuals who haven't disclosed their hearing loss, so people don't know they're using captions. So there are always reasons you may want to use InnoCaption on Zoom, but we like to share some of the downfalls of on-demand cart and why it is always better if it's an option to contract directly with a, a, a cart provider. Okay, Matt, sorry I bounced around. You can go back up. So back to desk view, which it was related to Zoom because that's what people use desk view most for. You are able to upload a contact list. Because we don't save your InnoCaption contact list in our server, the desk view contact list is only for desk view. So the first time you log on, there's no contacts. You can upload um, your Google or Outlook contacts, anything you want. That contact list will be separate from your InnoCaption contact list. The first thing that you see when you log in to desk view will be a emergency address pop-up. And in that pop-up, we allow you to put up to four addresses where you normally use InnoCaption from your computer. And that is for 911 calling. So please don't skip over it. Even if it's unlikely, you'll be calling 911 from the computer. Always make sure that your accurate location is there. Now, one of the best things about Desk View is it's, when you make an outgoing call, it's constructed a little differently. And because you're hardwire connected, if you're on a desktop computer, it has very, very good audio quality. So I highly encourage everybody to, to try it out and see what you think. The additional features that we have, and I actually already went over these additional features, so we can go ahead and move on. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. Uh, now we're going to start talking about some of the most frequently asked questions that we do get, even though we've already covered some of them. Uh, the number one question that we get is, can I use my existing cell phone number? And like I said in the beginning, this was a huge issue because when InnoCaption users were dialing out, the people that they were calling would see this InnoCaption number. They didn't know who they were calling, so they wouldn't answer. Well, today you don't have to rely on your InnoCaption number anymore. You can use the setting in my caller ID to select your cell phone number to show up on their caller ID. And you can pair that with automatic call forwarding. So if you're someone that needs captioning on every single incoming call, we highly recommend you setting up call forwarding. What that's gonna do, anytime someone calls you on your cell phone number, that call is gonna be automatically routed to your inno caption number. So the person, when they call you, they won't even know that you're using the inno caption uh, app. So the my caller ID paired with the automatic call forwarding, you no longer need to rely on your inno caption number and you can keep using your cell phone number normally. The other question that we get is, can I use my account with multiple devices? And this is something that was an issue again in the beginning, but now with desk view, you can use you know, caption on your cell phone, you can use it on your tablet. If you have an iPad, you can download it there. And with desk view, you can finally use it uh, on laptops and desktop computers as well. Christina, do you wanna talk a little bit about the landline telephone option? Sure. For outgoing calls, you're able to select your audio. We have this feature that's really wonderful. Um, you can send your audio to a landline. And why you may wanna do that or why some users really like that is some people have landline handsets that work really well with their hearing loss. Um, whether they have hearing aids or the hearing aid compatibility on it, they just hear better on that handset than they do on their smartphones. So for outgoing calls, you can set it up to ask you where you want to hear the audio. If you put your landline phone number, 
you click that, your phone will ring, you answer the landline, and then it goes through, it still goes through your cell phone. So it's not showing your landline number. It's the only thing that's different is instead of hearing the audio on your cell, you hear it on your, hand, your landline handset. And 911, people always ask, can I make 911 calls? Yes, you can make 911 calls on the Caption app. It is always safer, especially if you don't know where you are, to make a 911 call from a landline. The reason for that is landlines have fixed locations associated with them. And being hardwired, you don't have all the issues you have with cellular connections. So if you're in a position where you have bad connection, again, it's always better to call through a landline. Now we live in a mobile world. A lot of people call 911 from their cell phones. You can call 911 on anal caption. When you place a 911 call, your call is prioritized and we always send it through cart. If you are somebody who has your settings for automatic speech recognition, it will still initially place that call using CART, but once you're connected, you're able to switch to ASR if that's what you feel meets your accessibility needs. When you call 911, you are connected to Inno Captions Emergency Relay Center, and they'll ask you for your location, your name, and confirm your callback number. If you don't know where you are, you can tell that first operator and they're able to hit any button on their console to ping your phone, to pull your location. And that's why we ask for location services when you sign up for the app. That's the only time we ever pull your location. And from there, I feel like I should say, please don't test it. If you know where you are and it's an emergency, tell them where you are. A limitation with cellular technology is when you ping a device, the accuracy of the location depends very much on how long that phone has been connected, the Wi-Fi it's been connected to. And even in really best case scenarios, it will get first responders around 200 feet of where you are. But if you're in an apartment building, they'll know the apartment building, they won't know the unit. So it's great if you don't know where you are, they'll be able to ask you follow-up questions. They'll get you to the right 911 center and they'll ask follow-up questions to find exactly where you are. But again, always provide your exact address if you know it. Then that operator transfers you over to the 911 center. And this is the only time that in all caption will disclose that you have a hearing loss. That 911 operator during the transfer says, the I'm." connecting you to an individual who is deaf or hard of hearing, but they will be using their own voice to speak to you. Um, and the reason we do that is just for safety reasons and as a practical matter to make sure that they stay on the line with our users, even if there is a delay or, um, and they let first responders know as well. This review on the right-hand side of the screen is one of our favorites. Um, we love when our users take the time to submit reviews on the App Store and Play Store to share their experiences because it's one thing for somebody from Intel Caption to talk to a member of the community and, and explain what we do, but we're a business. It's, it's another for other community members to share the impact that the technology has had. So this review we like so much talks about an individual during Hurricane Delta last year that lost power. And so their landline caption phone was not working. And they were able to download an old caption to get a tree removed that was slowly falling closer and closer to their house before it hit the house and damaged it. So Matt, next slide. We already went over this. Um, an important reminder, in caption is not for in-person conversations. There is technology for that. I'm always happy to information share, resource share. If you anybody sends me an email, it's regulatory at inocaption.com. Um, 
anal caption because we are funded out of the telecommunications relay services fund, you cannot use it if you're in person. The golden rule that I tell people is you can use anal caption to make any phone call a hearing person would make. So as a hearing person, I would call my doctor. I would call into the audio on a Zoom call. I would call a family member. I would not call a contractor that was standing in the same room with me to say, I don't understand what you're saying. Hold on, let me get captions. Um, additionally, anal caption cannot be used in situations where cart services would normally be provided. So if you're in a situation where let's say your employer says, oh, we found anal caption, so we'll no longer be paying for a cart provider they can't do that. It is illegal to use in caption as a substitute for cart. And if anybody needs me to email an employer to let them know that, I'm happy to do that as well. Calling healthcare providers, um, especially during the pandemic with the rise of telehealth, we received a lot of questions regarding whether um, individuals were able to use relay services to call healthcare providers. And, and the answer is, yes, you are. The part of HIPAA that healthcare providers normally push back on when they find out a patient is using a, a relay service is the privacy rule. And the Department of Health and Human Services with the FCC put out a public notice a long time ago now, and it's linked at the bottom of this, that clarifies that when one of the parties to the phone call, whether it's the doctor or the patient, has a hearing loss, the individual is able to use relay services like in caption for their phone calls, and it does not violate the privacy rule of HIPAA. And now, Matt, I will pass it back to you. Great. Thank you, Christina. Well, we're getting close to the end of the presentation. Uh, like we always say, we'll stay for as long as people have questions. But if you have any questions, you can find the answers by either going on our website, uh, inocaption.com. And at the top, one of the tabs is a help center tab. You can click on it and you can look up anything uh, that you want to find out about the Inocaption app. We're constantly writing new help center articles and, and adding it there. So if you don't find anything, let us know. We'll make sure that it's included. The other option is to email us, uh, support at inocaption.com. And we have an amazing support team. I don't know if you guys can read it because the, the screen is a little small, but on the left, I, I have two very recent reviews, one from the App Store, one from the Play Store, talking about our support team. These are real people. If you email them, you got a message back within 24 hours for the most time. They'll work with you. They'll provide step by step to any issue that you might have, or they can even schedule a Zoom call with you if you don't think email is really getting to the bottom of it. Uh, besides the, those two options, if you want to know more about InnoCaption, you can find us on your regular social media platforms. We're very active on Facebook. That's where we update our users uh, about the, the latest news. But we also have Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, and we have a great blog page as well on our website where we uh, update articles all the time. Now, if you want brochures, you can email us at marketing at innocaption.com. And that just comes straight to me. So you'll be talking to me. Let me know if there's any marketing materials that you need. I'm more than happy to put a package together and send it to you guys. If anybody has any questions when it comes to regulatory, you can email regulatory at innocaption.com. And that email goes to Christina. So you'll be speaking to her. Uh, you guys just heard us talk for a very long time, and I do thank you for that. We're going to open up the floor now from some, for some Q&A. We'll stay for as long as you guys need us to be here. So let me stop sharing my screen. And before we open the floor really quick, I do want to say that when you email support, you will get an email back immediately saying that we've received the ticket, and it suggests 
some links that you can click. And that's what Matt was talking about, the help center that may help. Don't worry. Our support team will still get back in touch with you. The only reason we say 24 hours is because for more difficult tickets or overflow, we look into issues before we email you back. But the turnaround time is pretty quick. And um, our support team is always happy to troubleshoot with you in, in different ways. So as Matt said, if, if you need a Zoom call. Somebody or... has a question, a comment in the chat. Sure. And um, I don't know exactly what they're referring to. It's from Cindy Toff. Um, Cindy, can you please ask your question in person? Unmute yourself and ask your question. So what her question is in the chat, she said, is this like voice to text situation? Like when with our regular cell phone use, people vocalize what they want texted to recipients. So I don't know whether she's talking about an ASR captioning app or I don't know. No, I, I know people who, who talk in their phone and will come up and text to the recipient. Like my husband, he's hearing, he has a regular cell phone, he texts to it, and the recipient sees the text of it. You have to action the vocal or talk to text. If, okay, they, so the same, if they have the same, you know, the same uh, outcome. No, um, so, so Cindy, what you're referring to is a speech to text app okay so the common ones are ava which is available on both ios apple and google um, live transcribe which is available only on google and some people use a note taping note taking app called otter of okay. these three okay. apps the only one that allows for social distancing is ava because more than one person can be in the conversation at a time. Okay, so it's not the same. So, um, Cindy, I I believe what you're referring to is when um, hearing people when they're driving will respond to text messages using odd, their their voice. And I have a feeling you're asking because a lot of the time when people use that feature, you get some pretty ridiculous text messages back. Um, so the concept is very similar. So you speak and it turns into text. Now, the I don't know what speech recognition engine that uses. So it is the same concept, but I would like to think that what um, we are using provides less laughable transcription. With that being said, it very much depends on the speaker. So if somebody has a very clear voice and enunciates there's a good connection, the accuracy will be very high. If, um, if somebody has a voice pattern that's not recognized, it could produce laughable results, just like um, the speaking to text that you're referring to. Okay, thank you. Of course. What other questions do we have? Oh, I can't believe there aren't any more questions. Well, I'm going to sing some Eno Caption um, Hotspots. I absolutely love it. I've been using it forever. When the feature happened that you could uh, transfer your um, incoming call to your regular cell phone number, it's just fabulous. So you only have one cell phone number anymore. So Eno Caption comes in, it pops up, then it takes you to the Eno Caption window. You just answer right there and you're set to go. And now we have a question. Julie Johnson, unmute yourself. Okay, so um, one of the things that I've had the most difficulty with is whenever I have to talk to someone in customer service over the phone, so like the cable company or the telephone company, is it okay for me to use this in a caption with them? Okay, great. Yes, Julie, is... absolutely. And again, 
uh, the story that Christina shared with us about Joe, uh, he was calling customer support at the time. He was calling uh, a United uh, customer support. And that's how we created the switch between card and ASR. If you are calling customer support, in the beginning of the call, you may be speaking to an automated uh, system. So you can use ASR during that period, but then when they sw switch you over to a, an actual person, if that person has an accent, or if you have a hard time understanding that person, you can click to switch to cart, and then a real person will be typing. Like Christina said, a stenographer has a much easier time dealing with accents. So you can absolutely use an caption to make that call. And I saw that Cindy had a question in the chat as well. Um, a, a great one. When can we review the recording of this presentation? Uh, uh, Cindy, I'm sure Thomas, is, uh, uh, Cindy, I'm sure Anne is going to share the, the presentation with you guys afterwards. But and I'm also going to email two links. One is the corporate video that I was gonna play in the beginning. That was a message from our co-CEO. And the other one is a link to the desk view tutorial that we put together. Uh, it's a little bit longer. The corporate video is about three minutes. The tutorial is about seven minutes. So we take things very slowly to make sure that we go over every single feature. So if you are interested in, in trying out desk view for the first time, I highly recommend checking out that video beforehand. So the Diablo Valley chapter has a YouTube channel. Okay. Almost all of our meetings are on in that channel. And so all I have to do is go to YouTube and look it up and um, it'll be there. Now I have a question. So okay. I haven't used the desktop view yet, the new one. Mm -hmm. So if I want to use that, how do I get that view on my computer? It's very, we try to make it as simple as possible. All you have to do is go on our website. You go to innocaption.com and on the upper right hand corner, there's a login button. So you click on that, you enter your login information, which is going to be your cell phone number, the one that you registered with and the password that you created during the registration process. Now, I know some people They've been with us for five years, almost six now, and they created that password back in the day, so they don't remember what it is. If that's the case, there is a forgot password button on that page that if you click on it, it will take you through the steps on how you can reset your password. After that, you click login. The, the, there's going to be a browser window and with desk view, which is going to look like the one that, that we, the picture that we shared with the dial out on the right and the caption screen on the left. I now, know, if you just did it while you were, you talking. just did it. Oh, great. It is. Really and amazing. again, the biggest difference is that before this latest update, users had to call from their Inno caption app to get the captions on desk view. Now you don't have to do that anymore. You open up desk view on your computer and there is a keypad that you can use to make that outgoing call directly. And then you receive the captions either on your laptop or on your, your desktop computer. Yes, and that's exactly what it looks like. Thank you for sharing. And this feature is for outgoing calls. So when you get an incoming call, while it'll ring on your cell phone or your tablet, it does not ring on your computer. Something to keep in mind. So if you have, so I have my cell phone sitting right next to me. And so if I got a call on that and I pulled up the desk view, could I answer it on the desk view? You would have to answer it on your cell phone first. And then you would be able to click desk view to mirror the captions. No more your audio is, your audio is faint, Anne. We can't hear you. Your audio is faint. So can you hear me now? Oh, maybe it's, uh, let me get out of the Eno caption window. Can you hear me now? Just barely. Oh, weird. 
So we're having audio problems everywhere today. <laughs> Is that better? No, you were fine at the beginning. Maybe it has just recently it's gone bad. Um, so Sherry Parazzoli, you have a question. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Christina and Matt for this excellent presentation. Um, I, in Washington state, I, we get a lot of calls about specifics on how to use InnoCaption. And, and I have to confess that I haven't used InnoCaption regularly myself. And as a matter of fact, during this um, presentation, I just went in and tried to, uh, to you know, restore my um, application. And so now I actually have two logos or two apps on my phone. Uh, and I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yes. So you likely have the old version of Inno Caption. The new version is the speech bubble with the little equal sign. The old version that you want to delete is the one that has the two faces. So yeah, yeah that is the new one. You always want to make sure you only have one version of the Inno Caption app. Having both can cause issues. Um, but Sher Sherry, if you ever would like us to do a training for the state of Washington or even for you. So when you get people asking you questions, you know how to troubleshoot with them. We're always happy to do that. You can well, I was just now. I was just thinking that as I was watching this about, you know, how can I find the right market to make it worth your time and, and you know, to come and do a presentation. So so that that would be great. And I think, again, you know, the user experience really speaks a lot. A lot of these questions can be answered once I can, uh, I've actually experienced the situation myself. Um, so, so let me play with it a, a, a little bit and actually use it. And then I'll, I'll come back and circle back and, and I'll actually have some questions uh, for you that, that, and then we can actually move forward from there. So thank okay. you. Absolutely, Sherry. And like I said, during the presentation, if you need any marketing materials to hand them out, just send me an email. My email is the easiest one out of everybody in the company. It's just Matt, M-A-T-T -T at InnoCaption.com. So anybody here, if you guys have any questions, if you need anything at all, just please feel free to reach out to me directly at any point. Uh, Sherry, one thing you said uh, about scheduling for presentations, we do not care if we're talking to one, two, three, or 30, 60, 90 individuals. We'll, we'll schedule no matter what. If you need us to jump on a Zoom call, just let us know. Okay. That's excellent customer service. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Okay. So if we don't have any more questions, um, we have a few announcements to make. And first of all, I'd like to thank Matt and Christina um, for coming today. And I learned new things. So I get, as all of you who are here today, you know that I love technology and I'm always playing and fiddling with something new. Um, and I learned some new tips and tricks to try and I can't wait to experiment with a desktop view. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, and it's always an absolute pleasure uh, hearing from you. When I saw that email, we jumped on the opportunity to present. Like I said in the beginning, we're very excited to share DeskView. You guys were the very first HLAA chapter that we're speaking to about the latest version of DeskView. I'm very sorry that we weren't able to share the presentation like we usually do, but I will make the PowerPoint available to anybody that needs it. Thanks, Matt. So does anybody have any other questions about anything that's happened since we had our last meeting? Did you try something new? Did you run into a situation that was difficult for you to deal with? Does anybody have any comments to make? Oh, okay. So historically, Bob's Astro has always distributed homemade muffins. And since we can't meet in person, we just have to vicariously take one of Bob's muffins in from the slide here. Thanks, Bob. We know your heart is with us here for this. We have a few announcements. 
So UCSF is getting ready to run a clinical trial, and the clinical trial is going to be for anybody who um, is planning on getting a cochlear implant, but the cochlear implant that you choose needs to be Med-L. And I'm going to be sending this out via our email marketing tool, but I thought that I'd mention it today. And we've had Melanie Gilbert um, give us a presentation in the past. Maybe I'll be able to get her to come again. So I was hoping maybe for next month, but she's in the process of moving, so I don't know how long we have to wait. I want to remind everybody again, this is our big opportunity. Everybody needs to communicate with their representatives. There is a hearing um, aid bill, a Medicare hearing aid bill in the process. It's called HR 1118 and you need to take action now. And everybody who doesn't take action, you need to be really ashamed of yourself because we all bitch and moan about this, that Medicare doesn't cover hearing aids. So if they don't hear from us, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. So if you go to the HLAA website, it's very easy to find out who your representative is. Um, all you do is in the search engine, put in Medicare, and it will come up right after, right underneath that. And last time we demoed that, if there's anybody who has a problem finding out how to do that on the HLA website, please email me. I will Zoom with you. I can show you. I can walk you exactly through it. We'd like to remind everybody, you know, hearing loss is a disability. And we have to ask for communication access. This year was the 31st anniversary of the ADA. And unfortunately, um, we still have tons and tons of problems getting the communication access that we all need. Now, all of you know I'm a dyed-in-the-wool activist. And everybody says, well, where should I get this? You should be able to get it everywhere. The ADA specifies that auxiliary aids and services need to be provided for us if we ask for them. And that's all I have to say today. Um, if anybody else has um, something else, please speak up now. Um, and otherwise, if nobody speaks up, then we're going to go ahead and um, say goodbye and thank Corey our live captioner for the wonderful captions that we've had today. Does anybody else have something else to ask or comment or something that's upcoming for them? No news? Walt, how's your new implant? Uh, you're mute. <laughs> me okay um i'm bumbling along yeah. everybody sounds like r2d2 um i'm using the hearing aid on one side um i'm practicing reading um uh, uh i've downloaded an audio book and i read along with the print book um it's all new it's overwhelming but I'm glad I found, I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I did it. So Julie, I wouldn't have called on you even though I knew that you got a new implant <laughs> because um, you're not as familiar with all of us and I would have thought that I would have been betraying your privacy. But Walt Bateman, all of us know that Walt got his implant and so I was calling on Walt, but I think he left. So, Alan, no, I'm still here. you have your hand up. Oh, now you're back. So, Walt, do you want to give us the update? There's nothing much to say. Uh, it's been about a month since I got the implant. I've been doing practicing uh, uh, using the, uh, uh, the like uh, online uh, class. It's not like a class, but they uh have different uh 
test to see, not test, but they voice uh, through uh, half a dozen different people. You have a small video on the screen and they speak and you're supposed to interpret, uh, repeat back what they, what they say. Uh, I don't feel like my, the sound like, uh, Julie said it sounded like a computer. Mine does not sound like a computer to me. So I'm not sure what uh, other people experience. Uh, uh, I'm going along, hopefully that uh, over time, I will understand more and more of the, uh, what people are saying through my uh, cochlear implant. Uh, if anybody else has questions about the cochlear implant that I have, which was, uh, it's, it's really uh, advanced bionics slash phonak uh, type uh, uh, cochlear implant. Uh, one question I, I had is, uh, I think Anne answered it, is of course, if you have both ears working, everything you can hear better. And at first I thought I was only supposed to use my cochlear implant to learn what the, the speech sounds like. But I feel that if you use, if you have a, an ear that uses your regular hearing aid, it should be paired with the cochlear implant so you have even more information. I think I'm right on that, Anne. Is that correct? Yeah. So, Walt, the piece that when you're doing your oral rehabilitation practices, so like if you're on the computer and you're practicing hearing the sounds that people are saying or sentences, then you should only use your CI yeah, that's what I do. I take out my uh, yeah, my regular uh, life. You can do both. My hearing aid that I used before, and only use the cochlear implant to understand what the uh, the speakers on the uh, the practice sessions are are saying. Uh, it's getting it's getting pretty old though, and it's only been a month listening to the half a dozen of the same speakers. Uh, so, and I need more help. Where else do I go as far as practice? So there, are, there are multiple options. And like Julie said, Julie's losing, using audio books. So audio books, you know, it's, you're only limited by whatever you want to hear. Yeah. So Matt and well, Christina, so we're getting, question. I got two hey. cochlear implants during the pandemic and I'm hearing like I have not heard in 25 years, maybe ever. And Sherry Prayer's always shaking her head. She knows that we are on lots of committees together and I'm even forgetting to turn on the captions for everybody because I don't need them generally anymore. So um, it's, we're all in different stages of where we are and how well we're hearing. And there are other people on this call who also got implants during um, the pandemic and already have them. So if anybody else wants to say anything, please raise your hand. We'll give that a few minutes. Okay, so I guess nobody has anything else to share. Thank you everybody for coming and we'll see you next month. Thank you.